Welcome back to another lesson with me, Mr. B. We're transitioning to the project portion of this unit. It's time to take what you've learned and demonstrate your mastery over one of the literary movements and connect it to something relevant today. And we're going to do that by looking at what makes an introduction paragraph. So first, we're going to take a look at what is an introductory paragraph in the context of an informative explanatory essay. How are we going to be writing it? Up next, we're going to look at these three important questions that help us answer and support in defining our literary movement. Take a look at those intro requirements, this checklist of items that make up the introduction, and look at those in depth and how we can meet each of those criteria. And lastly, a thesis statement. Each introduction paragraph has one, and we'll take a look at what makes an effective thesis statement. So an introductory paragraph is the first paragraph of the essay. It has one main purpose. It makes readers eager to read more. In most essays, this paragraph contains a thesis statement. This is where your main idea is going to be for this essay. The three questions that we were looking at, what is this? So we're going to be classifying the topic into a larger category. In this case, if you choose naturalism, the larger category would be American literature. Then let your reader know what we want them to do. This is when you narrow down and define the topic for your reader. Let them know why this is important for them to keep reading. And lastly, they want to know why you're reading this. State your thesis statement. This lays out the direction the paper will take. The requirements that help us answer these three questions. A specific checklist overview of components that make up this introduction paragraph. So for background information, we're going to be thinking about if you explained what American literature is in a larger context. So did you describe what American literature is as a whole to a reader who probably doesn't know what American literature is? And were you able to connect that literary movement you chose to write about? As you're explaining what American literature is, you want to narrow it down to, say, your topic on transcendentalism. And then lastly, as you've narrowed it down, transition over to defining that literary movement, whether it's paraphrased or cited. You want to make sure that your reader understands what this historical movement is that you're talking about as it is centuries old. And this kind of segues us into your real world example. What is your present day example of influence from this movement? So you want to think about giving a general overview or summary about the media, literature, art, music, whatever it is you decide to include. Describe what that is and give your reader enough context about it. And that might include an author or title, especially if it's a work of literature. If you need to capitalize the author's name and italicize the title, make sure you do so. And if it's a smaller work, then you can just leave it in quotation marks. As for things like movies, again, larger work. So you would put the title in italics and things for like songs, quotation marks, because it's a smaller work. So this last sentence of your intro states how your example connects to the chosen literary movement that your body paragraph will address. So you want to make sure that this thesis statement is very clear in connecting your ideas from the literary movement to the piece of media or literature or whatever it is that you want to exemplify in your body paragraph. So how do we meet each of these requirements of the introduction checklist? So for background information, to reiterate, you're going to be classifying your movement. Explain what American literature is in a larger context, as if your reader does not know. Imagine that you're writing a paper for someone who's learning about American literature for the first time, or if you had to teach your past self. What do you think that you would need to know in order to better understand what American literature is and how your movement fits in with this definition of American literature that you provided? Define your movement. This can be a paraphrased version or a direct citation from the reader or other sources. Then you'll want to state why your main idea is important. Tell the reader why they should care and keep reading. Why is it important for a reader to know about this movement and how is it relevant to today? And here's a tip. Look at the event you chose. What are the keywords and themes that attracted you to choose it? The reason that I bring this up is because you want to think about why it's important to you, to the story or audience in this case. So here's an example. With naturalism, there are concepts like Darwinism or Charles Darwin himself or survival of the fittest. With modernism, it did talk about psychoanalysis or double consciousness. So you want to be specific in your introduction because if you're not going to be talking about psychoanalysis in your essay, then don't bring it up. But if you are going to say analyze a piece from J. Cole and you want to look at his music, then you may want to bring up double consciousness as you're talking about modernism in your introduction paragraph. And this brings us to the thesis statement, the last sentence where your main idea is located. A thesis statement is the main idea of your essay. It's going to be the bridge between your literary movement and your real world example. So here's a tip. Think back to the movement that you chose. What topics do you think need to be addressed? How does this relate or influence your real world example? So what not to say in your introduction paragraph? Try not to fall into these traps when you begin writing. Number one, avoid telling your reader that you are beginning your essay. So you could avoid 
saying things like, in this essay, I will discuss, I will talk about this, I'm going to prove this. In accordance with most MLA formatting, it is not a quote-unquote professional way to use I writing that I will do this, I will do that in your informative explanatory essay. Number two, don't apologize. Don't say things like, although I'm not an expert, in my humble opinion, you're not here to, to really have a conversation about what you're not knowledgeable of, you're here to prove what you're knowledgeable of. So there's no reason that you need to apologize for something that you don't know when you're the one that's conveying information to the reader. Number three, don't refer to the later parts of your essay in the introduction. So don't say something like, by the end of this essay, you will agree with, or in this next paragraph, you're going to see. Try to find a different way to say your points. Try to find different phrases to get your sentence started, or just be more direct in the first place. You don't even need to have, in the next paragraph, I will talk about blank. Just write, naturalism is focused on... And lastly, don't use cliche phrases. It might be easy to do this, but it really is just a lot of filler or, or flowery language. Something like, busy as a bee, or you can't tell a book by its cover. And there's many more phrases you don't want to just tack on to the beginning, middle, or end of a sentence. And it goes for all of these, right? A lot of these phrases be considered cliche because you don't really want to start any of your sentences with these or use them in your introductory paragraph. You can just be direct and you can just say it like it is. American literature is defined as or Transcendentalism focuses on Ralph Waldo Emerson's blank. So as we wrap up this section on introductory paragraphs, I just want to emphasize that there is no one way to write an introduction. So we're going to take a quick look at nine common patterns that an introduction might follow. It could begin with a general subject that can be narrowed down to a specific topic of your essay, which in this case is something that we are doing. This could be expanding or explaining your qualified or limited topics. In this case, that limited topic might be naturalism, going down from classifying what is American literature, narrowing it down to what is naturalism. You could begin with specifics, a brief anecdote, a specific example or fact that will broaden into a more general topic of your essay. So this is kind of like a hook, right? Sometimes you might include a quote, which is one of the other nine common things you can do, or specific facts to grab your reader's attention. In, th in that same sense, you could give a definition of a concept that will be discussed. You could just start off with naturalism, as defined by the Oxford Dictionary is blank. And like I just said, those past two things are kind of like a hook. Or you can have a startling statement that surprises the reader if you're writing something like a short story. It could be some sort of very descriptive detail that sets the tone and the atmosphere of the story bringing your reader in. And with number five, start with a statement or idea that is a widely held point of view. And then you could surprise the reader by stating that this idea is false or that you hold a different point of view. Um, kind of getting your reader to shift thinking as you've just thrown information in their face and you're like, wait a minute, that's actually wrong. Or this is what I think about that point of view. Number six, start with a familiar quotation from a famous book or person related to your essay. Again, that's another form of a hook as well. You can give a number of descriptive images that will lead to the thesis of your essay. You can ask questions that you intend to answer, and it could even be one of the essay prompts that you're given, depending on the type of assignment that you have. Or you can use a classification to indicate how your topic fits into the larger class, which it belongs to, or how your topic can be divided into categories that you're going to discuss. And this kind of brings us full circle, right? When we go back to the first common trend is that you're looking at the classification of American literature overall and narrowing it back down to the literary movement that you want to write about. I hope that in-depth overview of the introduction brings clarity on how to start your project. If you're stumped, check out the next video over here somewhere for an in-depth overview of some student examples. And if you still have questions, try asking three people before you ask me. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.